Hello, everyone. I'm Lin Dong Chao. This course is intended to help you gain a thorough understanding of the optical amplifiers of a WDM system. An optical amplifier is also called an optical fiber amplifier. It's a component that amplifies optical signals and optical communication channels. Based on the deployment location and functions, optical amplifiers are classified into inline amplifiers, preamplifiers, and booster amplifiers. Based on the working principles and structures, optical amplifiers in a WDM system are classified into erbium doped optical fiber amplifiers and Raman amplifiers. EDFAs work at the 1550 nanometer window, the same as the low line loss window of optical fibers. The gain spectrum of erbium ions overlaps with the C-band, which is the bandwidth with the lowest line loss in optical transmission. EDFAs were invented in the 1990s, and its introduction was a revolutionary breakthrough in the optical communication industry. EDFAs make long-distance, large-capacity transmission possible and are important components in a WDM system. An EDFA consists of the erbium-doped fiber, pump laser, optical coupler, optical isolator, and optical filter. The erbium-doped fiber is a core component of an EDFA amplifier. It is a quartz fiber with a length of about 10 to 100 meters, into which the rare earth element erbium is injected at a concentration of about 25 milligram per kilogram. The pump laser is a semiconductor with a transmit power of about 10 to 100 milliwatts and an operating wavelength of 980 nanometer or 1480 nanometer. So, how do EDFAs work? Erbium ions are highly active and they have three working levels, E1, E2, and E3. E1 is the lowest, also known as the ground state. E2 is the intermediate level, also known as the metastable state. E3 is the highest, also known as the excited state. When a 980 nanometer wavelength of pump light is injected into the erbium-doped fiber, erbium ions are excited from the ground state to the excited state. However, erbium ions are the least stable in the excited state and have short lifespans. The excited metastable level jump soon occurs, causing the distribution of population inversion between the metastable and ground states. When 1550 nanometer wavelengths of signal light traverse the erbium-doped fiber, metastable ions are transformed into the ground state by stimulated radiation, producing photons, the same as those in transmit signals. The number of photons is greatly increased, and therefore the optical signals are amplified in the erbium-doped fiber. The energy difference between E2 and E1 is the same as the energy of 1550 nanometer photons. Therefore, EDFAs can only amplify signals in 1550 nanometer wavelengths. EDFAs have four major advantages. First, EDFA itself is an optical fiber and therefore has high energy conversion efficiency and low coupling loss when coupled with fibers on the transmission line. The coupling loss is only about 0.1 dB. Second, an EDFA has a signal gain of 30 to 40 dB with the saturation output power of 10 to 15 dBm. Gain characteristics are irrelevant to optical polarization states, and therefore EDFAs can also be used in coherent optical communications. Third, EDFAs have a low noise figure to 4 to 7 dB. Physical theories show that a noise figure cannot be lower than 3 dB. Such a low noise figure is suitable for multi-channel transmission with high isolation and without crosstalk in WDM systems. The fourth advantage is the wide spectrum. Operating in the 1550 nanometer window, the spectrum range is 20 to 40 nanometer, covering the entire C-band. The wide spectrum allows beyond 80-channel transmission, facilitating capacity expansion for WDM transmission. EDFAs also have shortcomings. An EDFA has a fixed gain range and can only operate in the 1550 nanometer window. The gain of short wavelengths and long wavelengths requires other amplifiers. The second shortcoming is the uneven gain, which requires gain compensation. 
Third, if multi-level EDFAs are cascaded, the optical surge issue needs to be resolved. Otherwise, EDFA and other components will be burned. Common EDFAs can be classified into common power amplifiers and high power amplifiers based on the power. Generally, amplifiers with a total power of over 23 dBm or 200 milliwatts are referred to as HPAs. HPAs have limited application scopes and may cause severe nonlinear effects, especially in G.655 and G.653 fibers. Cascaded EDFAs can be further classified into one level amplifiers and multi level amplifiers. One level EDFAs have a relatively small gain, generally fixed at a value in the 15 to 23 dB range. A commonly used one level amplifier has a gain of 23 dB. Multi level EDFAs usually have two level EDFAs cascaded, with an automatic gain adjustable attenuation equalizer placed in between. The gain range is within the 16 to 40 dB range. Commonly used multi-level EDFAs have a gain range of 20 to 31 dB. Next, let's take a look at Raman amplifiers. The Raman effect, also known as Raman scattering, was discovered by the Indian physicist C. V. Raman in 1928. The Raman effect refers to the phenomenon where optical wavelengths shift to long wavelengths after being scattered. Raman won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1930 for this discovery. If a beam of weak signal light is transmitted through the same fiber with a beam of strong pump light, and the wavelength of the weak signal light is within the Raman gain of the pump light, the energy of the strong pump light is Raman scattered by simulation and coupled into the fiber oscillator. The energy is then transmitted in a longer wavelength, which is the wavelength of the optical signal. The weak signal is therefore amplified and obtains the Raman gain. Raman scattering causes an energy shift to long wavelengths by 70 to 100 nanometer. Therefore, by adjusting the wavelength range of the pump light, the Raman gain range can cover almost all wavelength ranges. Raman amplifiers have the following advantages. The gain wavelength is determined by the wavelength of the pump light, causing an adjustable wide operating spectrum. The gain medium is the transmission fiber itself, which is widely applicable, and the noise figure is lower than that of EDFAs by one order of magnitude. Raman amplifiers also have shortcomings. Raman amplifiers have a high output optical power. Maintenance personnel is forbidden to look into the optical port directly to avoid eye injuries. The Raman laser must be turned off before inserting or removing fibers. Otherwise, maintenance personnel might be injured by strong light. The second shortcoming is the high requirement on optical fibers. Except for the connector on an ODF subrack, all fibers have to be connected by fiber splicing within 20 km from the subrack. Common Raman amplifiers can be classified into forward Raman amplifiers and backward Raman amplifiers. Forward Raman amplifiers are placed at the transit end of the line side and usually follow a high power EDFA. Backward Raman amplifiers are placed at the receive end of the line side and must be followed by an EDFA. Generally speaking, Raman amplifiers cannot be used independently. Raman amplifiers can be classified into independent Raman amplifiers and mixed Raman amplifiers based on its composition. Independent Raman amplifiers are deployed independently. Early stage forward and backward Raman amplifiers are generally independent Raman amplifiers and are placed in the frames of standalone subracks. The gain range of Raman amplifiers is 10 to 20 dB. Mixed Raman amplifiers are composed of Raman amplifiers and EDFAs. Together with an equalizer and a variable optical attenuator, mixed Raman amplifiers are integrated into one board whose gain range covers any range within 20 to 50 dB. As technologies progress, independent Raman amplifiers are gradually being replaced by board-integrated mixed Raman amplifiers.